Welcome to Truck Your Podcast. My name is Sebastian. My name is Jose. So, it's been crazy last two weeks of cold weather. Yeah. We had a lot of uh, trucks freezing up for customers and our our trucks. Uh, we did a lot of winterizing. Yeah, we did. And we're going to talk about how does an engine, diesel engine, engine work. work. Correct. I like that. Um, I, I, it's... One of my favorite diesel diesels, you know, um, did I tell you I used to own a uh, diesel Mercedes Benz, an old chassis, 1982. It's the W123. It had 700,000 miles on it, on the Mercedes diesel. It was it, it was a, a car. It was from the South States, so it didn't have a lot of rust. It didn't have no, it didn't have any rust actually. When I saw the, I was like, are you sure that odometer? When I bought it is is good and yeah i was like yeah yeah i have all the records and and the guy like just drove it his ni- entire life like crazy yeah and i sold it to guys that bought it and they were like that's yeah we work on diesels and i love those at one point i'm gonna probably get the the w116 diesel the the 300 sd uh turbo diesel uh, first s class that mercedes came out okay. they're amazing seven like 70s um, so, um, yeah, but okay. Let's go back to uh, our how does an engine um, work? Diesel engine work. Yeah. So we have our intake, compression, power, and exhaust strokes. Okay. Intake. In uh, in- intake valves open up, air is coming in, pushing the piston down. Compression, pistons coming up, compressing the hot air. Uh, combustion stroke or power stroke fuel is injected at that time right timing the uh, top dead center and it's pushed down that's when you have the combustion it comes down and then you have your exhaust stroke exhaust valves opening up letting the exhaust fumes out perfect now we can finish the podcast <laughs> it's done <laughs> um, all right so you want to what's important for the for a diesel engine um, to work properly, uh, it'd be inlet, which would intake. You need to go to clean area. If you have a dirty air uh, intake filter, you're not gonna have the best out of it. And all those, uh, if you're doing like a lot of dump work um, or rails, I've seen that the air filters clog up pretty quick, and all those uh, sand or dust particles get past the filter, and they do do some damage in the cylinders true they so start clean, scoring out the cylinders. clean air um, air filters clean and, and i want to just uh, kind of set the context when i'm thinking about our topic today i'm thinking about more of all the pre-emission engines like that's what i think about when i think about it right yeah because uh, that's how the diesel engine was built without any restrictions Re- or anything yeah, no regulations uh, yeah and that's how i that's how i like it and um the dirty uh, air filter obviously is a key um, so depending on whatever what type of work you're doing, just keep an eye. Make sure you're on top of your your yeah. uh, air filter because it, it does get get clogged up. And you're right, a lot of uh, dump dump trucks obviously uh, have to swap them. Or, uh, or like sooner. there's guys that are hauling sand, all that stuff. Uh, yeah. What towards uh what east side? Yeah. East coast. Yeah. Uh, and so clean air, uh, warm, cold. Why so? So why would you? Because I want to kind of maybe for those who understand, um, uh, you know, gasoline engine. I'll go, I'm going to throw you some questions, and that's going to be like, okay, so why why does a diesel engine? Um, why doesn't why we don't need spark plugs for a diesel engine? Because it's uh, the air gets hot and the fuel is injected. Yeah. There is no when you compress air, compressor. It gets yeah yeah. It, it, that's why the the it gets you have a lot more efficiency and and when you're creating efficiency when the diesel engine is running what does it like to run hot cold do you why do you cool why do you keep it within certain uh, temperatures they like to run hot yeah yeah so hot clean air coming yeah. in is the best thing for yeah 
for diesel. Yeah, the hotter you can run it, the better it is for yeah for for a diesel engine. Uh, That's um, why some engines have the intake heaters. Yeah, intake heaters, and then um, you also can increase um, the temperature operating temperature. Yeah. Uh, on some of them, I know some guys do that. Well, they you uh, run 100% glycol and you not the 50 50 mix and then it just increases the temperature see now if you go that way then uh i've seen like liner uh failures more corrosion mm -hmm. yeah so have you seen have you seen um any of the guys running hotter with uh, swapped out thermostats and uh, letting the, the trucks run a little hotter um I wouldn't. No, I haven't came any because it, it it increases by a little bit. It's not that. I much. think it's like what well, because I know they have thermostats going from uh, 180, I think 190, mm -hmm. 200 at the most. High. So from what I've been seeing, it's over 200, 205, 215. I think is what I've what I've heard, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna preach that because it's as long as you can increase that. Obviously, you don't want to. Um, damage other components, components yeah you don't um, want that's that's, gasket, yeah, that's the number one that's the number one thing the seals and and gaskets are are gonna um, be in trouble but if you can increase the operating temperature of an engine it's usually a lot better uh, for the engine and it's and it's going to become a lot more efficient yeah so therefore producing more nox um so which we're not talking about emissions right now it was in the previous podcast but okay so um Exhaust, um, that would be, I've seen clogged up DPFs. I mean, we've had trucks towed in, truck won't start up, it's a clogged up DPF. We remove the pipe, inlet pipe going to the DPF, mm -hmm. move it out the way, truck starts up. Yeah, so if you create any type of restriction, whether it's emission standards or something in your or uh, I mean, exhaust. very, very rarely you have a very clogged up muffler rarely but what i'm thinking is um the more the less elbows you have the easier the exhaust uh oh flow, it's flowing yes yeah, flowing the out. better that's it right. is also for yeah. for the engine you doesn't have to work hard to push yeah, that push thing it out, out right? exactly so that's just for for you know um like this one has two one in the back but if you had two you would have y's and elbows and they would split yeah. up so you know that that affects it also to a point but the 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 sooner you get the exhaust out the better the better yeah and, and i was trying to th think of if you don't have a dpf what would restrict your exhaust but you're right like there's not, not unless somebody's throwing some oranges into your exhaust i mean it's r really rare i mean obviously what well, mufflers nowadays they last they they ride out pretty yeah. quick yeah. rust out. unless they yeah and they, they're rusting out but did we, you went to exhaust, did we talk about power? Um, power, I mean, I would say uh, overheads. Make sure your injectors are adjusted properly and intake valves, everything's adjusted properly and you're going to get good efficiency out of your engine and good performance. Yeah, that cycle needs to be, the, the uh, what oftentimes we've been seeing here is the guys don't do overheads and... Well, you see it by obviously fuel economy, fuel efficiency coming down, yeah. and then gets to a point where where you're losing power. Like we had that other customer, it's yeah. like, oh, crap! It's it's because it hasn't been done for so long. It's so out of adjustment. Yeah, and he had a, what like four hundred thousand miles on yeah. it, and never without without yeah. without an overhead. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. What do you? What would you want? Uh, ideally, uh, guys, to I would say every hundred thousand. Yeah. Every hundred thousand run the overhead and once a year depends. Yeah, and 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 I understand that because you, I mean we have trucks that we haven't done overhead in our trucks for some time because it's just always something else to do. Yeah, so you know it's easy to say oh easier just push it push it aside. Yeah, it's 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 because you don't you're not thinking about it, but how critically important it is to to have your truck to to have the engine run uh, properly how it yeah. should because you you ignore it. Obviously, uh, valves aren't going to be like that guy. We had the intake valves were too too tight. The yeah. intake valves weren't closing. Yeah, yeah. So then you you run that risk that intake valve can come contact with the piston. Yeah, yeah. Or valve seats wearing out. Yeah. Um, okay. Intake compression power 
and exhaust. Um, I would say, why do you think, why do you think e diesel engines had such a wide application in in commercial use? Why they had okay, you know why why is it why is it that uh, everybody, especially you know the torque obviously you you get a lot more torque out of the diesel, uh, diesel engine. What's the common, oh, we should probably talk about what's like a common layout. Is it, you remember the V8s in the back in the day and then now uh, inline sixes. Um, why do you think they went They went away from, they stick? What, the inline six? Mm -hmm. no, I, I, no. You wouldn't know? No, I wouldn't know to be honest. Yeah, so, well, so again, it's, it's and, and purely it's a conversa conversational um, uh, topic between us because to me, uh, an inline six engine is is a lot more efficient. Just, just yeah, just because just of it inline than yeah, uh, V8. Yeah, even in the gasoline engines, you know, yeah. uh, a lot of racing engines are based on inline, inline six. Yeah. Um, so you're 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 increasing the efficiency of a diesel engine, obviously, with that layout. But have you worked on the V8s before? No, no, yeah, I no, have not. No. Yeah, I would want to get one. Um, we have one outside, right? The inter international. True, the bus. Yeah, yeah. We should totally. Uh, we have to. Yeah. Wow. I. Um, it's that's been honestly. I think that's the first one I've ever seen in like, up front, like in person. Yeah. We do have to start maybe doing something around. I would really want to take it apart. And, yeah. And play with it. Uh, my second question is, what are we gonna do since we um, talked about how diesel engine work? Uh, I would say, what is it? What is something that we should um, restore? You know, I've talked to you about, about yeah, buying like a, a truck. Yeah, uh, buying a project. I have some ideas. Um, I would want to hear what you what 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 would you want to do? Like, if you would want to go for a classic or something classic. for yourself or to, so, to so sell. So something for something that's obviously will will not only um, be fun to work, original, and we'll put it to work whether as a spare truck or a tow truck. Tow truck, yeah. Um, but I want to more focus on what would be our ideal layout and engine and uh, size of the truck, of uh, frame length, uh, sleeper, obviously. Um, what model? Because I have one model that I really like. I think they're very underappreciated. What um, is it? Uh, Camworth or a P? No, it's actually a Freightliner. Uh, Coronado or is it the Classic? Classic, yeah. I think they're they're widely uh, underappreciated, and I think going forward, since they, there's a lot of them that were running on Detroit's on the good 12.7 Series 60, um, it's going to be the classic. You know, it is. It's already a classic truck, yeah. but it's it's going to be, be a lot cheaper on parts. Yeah, yeah. It's just every the parts are everywhere, and they yeah. and they and they're and they 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 look good. I think. You know. Yeah, you still get the classic look. If I mean, yeah. let's just say if you can afford a Pete or a Kenworth, because it's yeah. gonna, it's going to be expensive. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why that's why I'm thinking about budget, right? Like yeah. what we're thinking of. Uh, yeah, budget. Uh, how do we want to sp spend? How much money we want to spend? Because if I was going to do it for myself, I would do W nine hundred A, and and that's it, <laughs> right? Put a big double eagle sleeper in the back, and and that would be my project. But it's, I'm thinking more about what could we build even uh, in the future that's somewhat within a, a normal budget, very reliable, easily uh, p available parts all over the US, and we have a lot of fun and we, we just shoot a lot of content around it. Yeah, then I would go with a classic with a, with a Detroit Caterpillar, or um, yeah, probably those two. Yeah, I say so uh, too, yeah. I, I was thinking that, and then as far as originality, I don't know if you, I found that since I'm into international trucks lately, um, the um, the 4300 Transtar, the early one, the very early one, they had a um, very classic look, um, the 70s, 80s. But I would, I don't know, I think they're a lot uh, more rare than Brand to get than a hold of parts. Classic, it's gonna yeah, be yeah. So that would be more like the the kind of unique project uh, versus building something. Um, you know, like a classic Excel that's yeah. a lot more um, that you can still use and 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 afford. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure that truck, the international at 
frame from that year it's going to be pretty pretty beat up the frame yeah yeah which that's that's i don't since we don't have a, a lot of uh, internationals in our fleet or here we have few customers with them i don't know if you were going to go to like, like an international um dealer and still get parts for like a 78 you know yeah we well, haven't i don't have that experience i don't yeah. think we've yeah i would we would, yeah so that definitely see like researching that's going to be fun i think we should definitely look into a project just like uh volvo was selling detroit parts at a point now yeah you can't get a hold of uh detroit parts at volvo yeah yeah uh, there was 2001 like? or two was the last one they they let you spec it and then they carried the parts for a little bit up to like what like oh five maybe i think so yeah and they still do it with comments uh but i'm I'm not. I'm not sure if they already went. Aw- if this, can you still spec a new Volvo with comments? I would have to double check. We haven't looked at new Volvo. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you could. Sure. Um, yeah. So, let's summarize really quick. So, how does an in- engine, engine, diesel engine work? Clean, warm air yeah. for the intake. Compression. You explain it how it works. Power power and, and exhaust, exhaust. Yeah. the less friction you have everywhere the better the better yeah right the, the uh, easy air in easy air, air out. out and just gonna be running good yeah and have a lot of um life in a diesel engine yeah because i've seen some high mileage trucks without overhauls plus two million miles yeah. easy you know i had this one guy uh, pulled in uh, i'm blanking on the engine it was definitely pre EGR older truck. It was two point three million miles. And I was like Yeah, he's like, I just just run it here locally locally and um he was asking me about, you know, some parts and I was like, Wow. Is that like like really two point three million yeah. miles? He's like, Yeah, just you know taking care of it. So it's you can get up there for sure. Yeah, you it's know. all about maintenance. Yeah. Taking care of your your truck that you buy and uh again when you're thinking about buying knowing what you're buying no nope, yeah exactly we're, we're, more than we're anything gonna know beat what that horse to, till it's dead because i think the prep is the most significant thing it's like any investment like it's yeah you, you got to do your research and you and you and you're gonna make money uh when you get into it not when, yeah. you're, when you actually have it or get out right it's yeah similar uh to any you know if you buy a, any investment low uh, and you know all about the investment that's where that's where that's where you make money that's yeah. where you, how you profit from it from your asset um, think about trucks as assets you have to you have to approach it that way it's just not a tool that you can pick up the first random one and and it's not no, and it's drive not like uber yeah. right so awesome anything else you want to add uh, we're gonna do the videos coming up oh we're, we're gonna be doing a walk around right the walk arounds the um um trucking 101 we're gonna call it okay right like a basic one yeah. and then we're gonna maybe gradually start well we're gonna do what uh one on a detroit and one on the d12 mm-hmm. and if we can get a, oh well we have the n14 yeah and we have isx too yeah we we could do all yeah. of them that would be good that would be good every yeah. just point out the components for the guys yeah so they yeah for sure okay perfect let's uh do that we have some um new podcast ideas coming up i want some i want to get some owners here just yeah. kind of do a social hour talk about some some of their experiences maybe some of our owners and even have a bigger group of guys so yeah thank you man appreciate it right. subscribe if you haven't share with your fans and we'll talk to you soon